OK, so we're going to have a look at a really interesting number system. So instead of base 10, where we write numbers as sums of powers of 10, we're going to have a look at base minus 10, where we can write numbers as sums of powers of minus 10. So what we'll do is we'll start with a couple of examples, representations of numbers in base minus 10, and we'll convert these back into base 10, sort of see what's going on. So if we just pick one, let's go with 18182 in base minus 10. What does this actually mean? So in base 10, you'd know that this is two ones, eight tens, 100, eight thousands, and then one lot of 10,000. But in base minus 10, this two, basically this still represents ones, because it's minus 10 to the power of zero. So we get a contribution of two. But then this eight, instead of representing 80, this actually gives us a contribution of minus 80. Then this one minus 10 squared is 100, so this gives us a positive contribution of 100. And we get this sort of alternating structure of having positive and then negative contributions. And our final one here, this one lot of 10,000, is still positive because it's minus 10 to the power of 4, which is positive. So if we want to convert this into base positive 10, all we need to do here is you do 2 minus 80 plus 100. And there are a few nice little shortcuts you can take here, so we can group these into pairs where they're positive. So you, the 2 just gives us a contribution of 2. Then you've got plus 100 minus 80 gives us a contribution of 20. Then finally, 10,000 minus 8,000 gives us a contribution of 2,000. So in base 10, then, this number that we started with is actually worth 2,022. We'll have a look at another example now, converting again from base minus 10 into base 10. And this illustrates something really unique to having a negative base system. So let's start with 2038 in base minus 10. So how are we going to convert this into base 10? The 8 represents 8 ones, this is fine. Then the 3 represents a contribution of minus 30. The 0 is just 0. And then we get a contribution of minus 2,000 from the 2 here. So you can see here, hopefully, that this is going to give us a negative answer. So we want to calculate this. We can't split up into positive contributions, but we can split it up into nice negative contributions. So minus 30 plus 8 gives you minus 22. And then minus 2,000 gives you a contribution of minus 2,000. So here we get minus 2022 in base 10. And this is something really cool about having a negative base system, is that you can write a number that's negative without having to put a negative sign in front of it. So for example, if you wanted minus 8, you could write this as minus 8 in base minus 10. You'd have negative 8 lots of 1. But then you could also write it as 1, 2 in base minus 10, because it's minus 10 plus 2. So there's actually no particular need to resort to having negative numbers. It turns out, and we'll explore this a little bit later on, it turns out that we can express any negative integer just using positive digits there without a negative sign before it. So now that we've seen how to convert from base minus 10 to base 10, we'll have a look at the opposite direction. And there's actually quite a nice method we can use, which is very similar to how you would convert to other positive bases. What we'll do is we'll go through a worked example and then we'll have a more detailed look at why this method actually works. So we start off, basically you take your number, divide by minus 10, and you find what is the remainder and set this up so that your remainder is positive. And you subtract this, whatever you've got left, you divide that by minus 10, find the remainder, take that away. Basically just keep going until you reach zero. So this is much clearer when we look at a worked example. So if we start with 1729 and we're going to convert this into base minus 10, first thing we do is divide this by minus 10. So you can write this as minus 172 times minus 10 plus 9. So our remainder here is going to be 9. So basically what we're saying is 1729 divided by minus 10 gives you minus 172 remainder 9. And this 9 is going to give us our 1's digit for this. So now what we need to do is we take what's left, this minus 172, we divide this by minus 10. So this we can write as you might be tempted to write it as 17 times minus 10 take away 2. But unfortunately here this gives us a negative remainder. So we don't want that because our remainders are actually going to be the values for the digits. We want all of these to be positive. So the convention we'll actually use is going to be 18 times minus 10 plus 8. So we take a slightly different number just so that we get a positive remainder. So this tells us that minus 172, divide this by minus 10, you get 18 remainder 8 rather than 17 remainder minus 2. Okay, so do the same thing now with 18. 18, we can write this as minus 1 times minus 10 plus 8. So 18, when you divide this by minus 10, you basically just get minus 1 
remainder 8. Then you've got to do the same thing to minus 1. Minus 1, you can write this as 1 times minus 10 plus 9. So we'll do that. 1 times minus 10 plus 9. We've got a nice positive remainder there. That's great. So minus 1 divided by minus 10 is actually 1 remainder 9. And then finally, we've got 1 here. So how do we write 1? 1 is actually 0 times minus 10 plus 1. So we still have a positive remainder here. We've got 0. So 1 divided by minus 10 is actually just 0 remainder 1. At this point, you'd have to divide 0 by minus 10, but you just get 0 remainder 0. So at this point, our algorithm has terminated. Okay, so what does this actually tell us? Well, this tells us, following this, that our digits are going to be 9 ones, 8 lots of minus 10, 8 lots of 100, 9 lots of minus 1,000, and 1 lot of 10,000. So this is telling us that 1,729 in base 10, this is actually going to be the same as 19889 in base minus 10. So if you ever see this number, 19889, on a taxi, now you can appreciate its significance. So what we'll do now is we'll just have a proper look, because it perhaps doesn't make that much sense at the moment, but there's quite a nice intuitive way of understanding why this method works. So now if we assume that a number does have a base minus 10 representation, what we'll do is we'll have a look at why this procedure of keep dividing by minus 10 and then taking the remainder. Why does this give us the digits in our base minus 10 representation? What we'll do is at the very end we'll have a look at why there is always such a representation. Basically we'll show that this algorithm will always terminate. But just for now, if we assume that such a representation does exist, I'd quite like to explain how we always get our digits as the remainders at each step. So we start off with 1729 and divide this by minus 10. So here, because we've already got it in this nice representation, you can see we just take away 1 from all of our powers of minus 10. So you got 1 times minus 10 now to the power of 3, plus 9 times minus 10 squared, plus 8 times minus 10 to the power of 1, plus 8 times minus 10 to the power of 0, and then you've got a remainder of 9 from this 9 term here. Okay, so now we take whatever's left, and we don't even particularly care what the value of this is. So everything without the remainder, if I call this Q1, our first kind of quotient term, so Q1, divide this by minus 10. Again, you can see we just take away 1 from all of the powers, so you get 1 times minus 10 squared, plus 9 times minus 10 to the power of 1, plus 8 times minus 10 to the power of 0, and here we've got a remainder of 8. So we get rid of the remainder, forget about that, and we take our Q2. Again, we don't really care what the actual value of Q2 is, but Q2 now, divide this by minus 10, you get 1 times minus 10 to the power of 1, plus 9 times minus 10 to the power of 0, and then a remainder of 8. So we take everything other than the remainder here, we'll call this Q3. So you can see here Q3, we divide this by minus 10, we're going to get 1 times 10 to the power of 0, at minus 10 to the power of 0, with a remainder of 9. And what have we got left here? Basically our Q4 term, which is just equal to 1. We divide this now by minus 10. We're just going to get 0 remainder 1. So you can see here, just from this structure, given that such a representation does exist, you're always going to get, this is going to be your first remainder after you divide by minus 10. Divide by minus 10 again, and your next digit is going to be the remainder, and so on and so on, and then it just sort of terminates when we reach our last digit, and we get zeros from there on. So what we'll do, just to finish off now, is we'll have a look at why does this algorithm always terminate? This is important, because if we can show that this algorithm terminates, then this tells us that any integer, positive or negative, will have a nice finite representation for this in base minus 10. And this comes back to our previous point as well for negative integers, being able to write these without a negative sign in front of them in base minus 10. So what we'll do is we'll kind of implicitly show this, because all of our remainders are taken to be non-negative. Okay, so how are we going to show that the algorithm terminates? Well, if we say our starting value is n, this is just the number that we're trying to convert from base 10 into base minus 10, then our next kind of bit left over, sort of informally, or our next kind of quotient, this is what you get by taking away the first remainder from your original number and dividing by minus 10. Okay, so this gives us our Q1. And what do we do to get our next kind of leftover bit, our next quotient? We take away the remainder, divide by minus 10. We keep going like this, keep taking away the remainder, keep dividing by minus 10, until eventually we should hopefully get 0. So I'll show that this algorithm terminates, basically just by showing that this sequence, Q0, Q1, Q2, and so on, that this sequence is strictly decreasing, so it is going to go down 
to zero eventually, because at each time we have got an integer. Okay, so q0 is equal to n, q1, we take away the remainder and divide by minus 10. So if we have, let's say we've got qn plus 1, the absolute value of this is just the absolute value of qn minus whatever that remainder was and divided by minus 10. So we can write this using the triangle inequality. This is less than or equal to qn over minus 10, the absolute value of that, plus the absolute value of minus rn divided by minus 10. We can tidy this up somewhat as well with the minus 10s. We can just turn this into qn, absolute value of that, divided by 10, plus the absolute value of our remainder divided by 10. So don't forget here that our remainder is chosen to be between 0 and 9. So actually our remainder, absolute value of that, divided by 10, is always going to be strictly less than 1. Okay, so we can write this as strictly less than the absolute value of qn over 10 plus 1. You can see here this is all going to be less than or equal to qn, unless qn is equal to 0, 1, or minus 1. So here, if we say that qn isn't equal to 0, 1, or minus 1, then certainly this is actually dividing a number by 10 and then adding 1. It's going to be much, much smaller than what you started with. So then all we're left with is three separate little cases to consider. If you've got qn equals 0, the algorithm just terminates because you've got 0, which is what you're looking for. If you've got qn equals 1, you have 0 remainder 1. When you divide that by minus 10, the algorithm terminates once again. And if you have minus 1, then you end up with minus 1 gets written as 1 remainder 9. And then you're left with 1 as your quotient, which we know terminates. So you can see, just by splitting into some of these cases at the end, we do actually have something where the absolute value of qn plus 1 is strictly less than the absolute value of the previous term, unless we're in one of these cases where we know that it terminates. So this tells us then that we do always have a nice space minus 10 representation for any integer, positive or negative. So here we've not made any assumptions that n had to be positive.